Now, when we are discussing Indigenous sky knowledge, there's one feature that is really important that we have to acknowledge. And that's the fact that things that happen here on Earth are intrinsically connected to things that are happening up there in the sky. And this is a fact that Indigenous people knew and respected. Uh, there's a saying, uh, what's on the land is reflected in the sky and what's in the sky is reflected on the land. And that's really common across a lot of different Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander nations. That's what we're going to be exploring today um, in this lecture. Now, it's quite different. It's quite a different perspective, quite a different way of viewing the world to say how maybe we're used to with Western knowledge systems. Uh, let's dive into this and look at it a little bit closer. So here I attempted to break up um, just very briefly what uh, say one story, one piece of Indigenous knowledge actually could look like. Uh, and it can break down into these various components. Uh, you know, you can look at it through this lens and say, okay, we have uh, the land knowledge over here, we have the sky knowledge over here, um, and then they further break down into different respective topics as well. But what's really significant with Indigenous knowledge is that all of these pieces of information they're kind of packaged together and they're all connected to each other. So say if there is something that maybe is affecting a species, a water species, that is often linked to something that's happening on the land, what's happening in the sky, what's happening with another creature, another, um, say, uh, maybe even a plant, um, you know, all these different things combined to create uh, indigenous knowledge. Um, and we actually see this. This is actually a really efficient way of uh, transmitting information, right? When we silo information off, as we do in our Western systems, it is a good technique. And obviously we learn a lot from using that technique. Um, and, and that's great. But when we connect that information to um, something that it's related to and we we keep it intact with its relational information. There's a lot more information to convey there. And what indigenous knowledge systems do and what stories do is they package it all together. Um, now, this is one example. Uh, this is what I would call, um, you know, like a hierarchical flowchart, nested flowchart. Uh, and we see this type of, um, this type of graph or this way of presenting information quite often in things like information technology, statistics, um, it's commonly used. Um, and you know, that shows us it's quite a useful way of transmitting information. It's very similar to how multi-layered stories work as well. In comparison, when we silo things off, we just kind of have these uh, much neater packages, I guess, you know, they're um, quite you know, um, comprehensive in their own little package, but we don't have any of that relational information. And that's very much what indigenous knowledge systems convey, that interconnected information. Now, as I've just mentioned, our stories are packed with this type of interconnected knowledge. So I thought it'd be good to take a bit of a closer look.